Welcome, welcome to our students who are joining our college fair this evening. Students, as you are entering the room, I just wanna go over how the program will be presented for you. Um, I wanna let you know that your camera and your microphone are off, uh, so our panelists can't see or hear you. Um, if you do have a question though for any of our panelists throughout the presentation, go ahead and use that Q&A box uh, down at the bottom and our representatives will get back to you. If it is about a specific school, make sure to uh, put that in there so that the reps know who to um, who's going to respond. Um, please know that there are more sessions in our CASDA virtual college fair uh, tomorrow evening as well. So check the website for the schedule. Also wanna let you know that this recording will be available in the future uh, and that that will be available at strivescan.com slash CASDA, C-A-S-D-A. N Y. And so I will go ahead and get our presentation started this evening. And we will start with University of Massachusetts Lowell. All righty. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Mike Kalinowski, uh, one of the admissions counselors for uh, UMass Lowell. UMass Lowell, in case you don't know, is a public research university. Uh, in Eastern Massachusetts. We are uh, one of the uh, four uh, UMass, actually five UMass campuses. And so with UMass, a little quick little profile for you folks. Uh, so we have a, about 11,000 undergraduate students. Uh, if you add uh, grad and online, it's about 18,000 total. So although we are a, a medium to larger size school, we definitely try to keep our class sizes small and offer tons of support. For our students, as you can see, a 17 to one student to faculty ratio, average class size of about 19, 20 students. Within that, you know, you have a whole, um, 120 different undergraduate degrees that you can choose from. If you want a really specific degree, you can go ahead and get that. Uh, if you are looking for something a little bit more general, we have options for you as well. Tons of different undeclared options. So if you know you wanna do something in business or engineering or the sciences, but you're not exactly sure what field, you can always start off an undeclared uh, academic college major and then pick a specific major down the road there. We also have seven different graduate level degrees. So absolutely feel free to stay on and get a high level, level degree with us. We do offer a four plus one bachelor of some masters where you can start taking some of your grad classes a little bit early. And the goal is to eliminate one year of grad school. So it'd be five years or two degrees instead of the traditional uh, six years. Uh, we also have a three plus three uh, law opportunity, um, and we offer uh, PT, uh, PT, pre med, pre dental. Um, so, a lot of different options for you there. A big thing about us is our hands on learning opportunities. Uh, we're definitely a hands on learning school, so getting you out of the classroom into real life spaces. We do that in a bunch of different ways. So, the traditional internship co-op opportunities, which is a little bit more intense. So it's typically one semester of full-time work in your field. Since you are working full-time, you're also getting paid like a full-time employee. But that key point is definitely getting uh, to see what your actual career might be like and get to network with, with professionals. And a lot of our students get offered jobs that way. Tons of different study abroad options in over 80 different countries around the world. So absolutely feel free to sign up for those. Trying to keep costs the same as if you were on our campus, but going out somewhere else and having a great experience. For education in our health students, we offer clinical practicums. So having you in local hospitals and local schools, working with real students and real patients. And then we also are a service learning university. So you're gonna be doing some community service as part of your uh, academic structure, which is really nice. A couple of fun facts on the right-hand side of that slide. So, uh, you know, 12,000 students, give or take. Nearly half of our graduates are actually transfer students. We're a division one university for athletics with 16 different sports that you can choose from. Um, and there are over 275 different clubs and organizations. I'd find it, I'd be very surprised if we didn't have a club for you. So absolutely feel free to uh, join as many clubs as you would like. Tons of scholarship opportunities ranging from 2000 to $20,000 per year. As far as the, uh, the application process and averages and what we're looking for, uh, we're typically looking for a strong B student. So a 3.3 GPA is a great place to aim for. 
We are test optional for every single major, uh, but if you do submit your test scores, we're typically looking for middle 1100s and above on the SAT and about a 23 and above on the ACT. We do have three application deadlines, uh, early action one and two, um, regular decision, and early action one is required for our nursing students. All other students, you can pick from any of the deadlines listed there. And then we're on the Common App, the Coalition application. We have our own online application. So feel free to choose any of those uh, for the application there. And that's all I have. So thank you very much. Great, thanks so much. We will now move on to Massachusetts Maritime Academy. Hi everybody, my name is Callie O'Brien and I am one of the assistant directors of admissions at Mass Maritime. I'm also a graduate from the Academy. We are part of the public university system in Massachusetts. And uh, we are also known as a special mission college, which I'll get into in just a second. So some quick facts, we are located in Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts. That's about an hour south of Boston and about an hour from Providence, Rhode Island. We have about 1700 undergraduate students. So we are a very small campus um, and about 1550 of those are our undergrad. Um, that are actively on campus and we do have a very small number who um, are commuting. One of the things that people see when they hear academy is they think that we are the military and uh, we are not. We are um, very much a four-year institution, but we do require that our students wear a uniform, um, which is where that misconception comes from. We offer a STEM-based education with a regimented campus life. Students are guaranteed housing for all four years. It is 97% of the time um, actually fully required for students to be on campus. And then um, tuition fees, room and board, which includes your C bag, which is all of your uniforms um, for out of state students comes to about $42,000 a year for New England Regional, 31,000 um, and in state 27. We only offer seven different uh, programs for our students, so I will list them briefly. Uh, marine engineering and marine transportation are our two biggest programs, and those are what get us our classification as a special mission college. And those two programs prepare graduates to work in the shipping industry. So in the simplest terms, either driving a ship or keeping it running, um, but we're talking about anything from tugboats to container ships and tankers. We also offer um, two additional um, engineering programs, facilities engineering and energy systems. Emergency management has been one of the most popular programs the last several years. And then we have an international maritime business program and marine science safety and environmental protection. So all of our programs are bachelor of science degrees um, and all have a little bit of a, a focus in engineering or the maritime field. We operate on a learn do learn philosophy. All of our students are required to do experiential learning. Uh, that starts as early as the winter of your freshman year. So we really want to get you hands-on, um, immersed in your program of study. So depending on your major, we'll determine what type of hands-on programming you will do. And then through um, any one of our programs, you can really be looking for careers on land or at sea. The regiment, this is the, the piece that makes us a little bit different. Um, the picture that you see on the top there, the, that all black uniform, that is what we call our, our classroom uniform and students wear that uh, probably about 85% of the time. They wear it to classes, they wear it in the cafeteria, which we call the mess deck, um, but we're not the military. So more than anything, it serves as a leadership lab on campus. It enhances our academic programs and contributes to career success. So our students get a lot of leadership and management experience before they ever hit the workforce. The daily schedule is very structured, and that's for anyone from freshmen to seniors, um, different structural requirements, but it is very structured throughout your four years. And all of our students have opportunities to apply for those leadership positions um, within the, the regiment, which is where they'll get that management experience. We do have uh, Division Three athletics on campus. We have um, 
men's and women's teams uh, cross country, track and field, sailing, crew, soccer, and lacrosse. For men's teams, we also have football and baseball. And then women's teams, we have softball and volleyball. We have a very active student government association um, doing different pop-up events. And um, this semester has been the semester of food trucks, which is always a nice surprise for faculty, staff, and students. Uh, we also have academic and military type of clubs. And then seventh company are any students who are interested in the band or the honor guard. And this is uh, my information here, if you wanted to grab a, a quick shot of it, um, but that's how to get in touch with us. Great, thank you so much. We will now move on to Suffolk University. Oop, was I muted? We will, we will now move on to Suffolk University. Okay, um, well, hello everyone. Um, thank you for tuning in today. Uh, my name is Brian Denzak and I'm an assistant director of undergraduate admission at Suffolk University. Um, so just to start off for anyone who may not be familiar with us, um, we are located in the heart of downtown Boston. Um, and I usually like to describe us as a great student for, as a great fit for a student who knows that they wanna be in a city environment, but they also like a smaller class size and kind of a smaller kind of close knit community. Um, Cause that's essentially what we are. Um, average class size is 17, student to faculty ratio is 14 to one. Um, so it is kind of a nice contrast and that sense of having that bigger feel, but also that smaller um, close-knit community. Um, it really is kind of the best of both worlds uh, in that case. And regardless of whatever you study at Suffolk, you'll be interacting with the city of Boston in some way throughout your four years. Uh, and there are so many different ways uh, to really take advantage of the city. Uh, so when it comes to kind of academics and just kind of a little bit of information, um, we have over 70 undergraduate programs for our students to choose from um, all across a wide ranging um, variety of different programs, everything within the business realm. So finance, accounting, marketing, entrepreneurship. Uh, we have programs in the in the arts, so interior design, studio art, art uh, and graphic design. Uh, we have things within the sciences, so chemistry, biology, uh, we have law, politics, um, really, again, psychology, criminal justice, again, a wide variety of different programs for our students to choose from. Uh, and we have uh, just under 4,400 undergraduate students in our total undergraduate population. And again, 14 to one student faculty ratio and an average number of, seven, an average number of uh, 17 students per class. Uh, and one kind of cool thing about us as well is that we do really feel strongly about the study abroad opportunity. Um, and one of the coolest op options that we have is that we have our own sister campus in Madrid, Spain. Um, so this is Suffolk University right in Madrid. Um, students can study there for up to two years with the exception of our international relations students who can spend all four years there if they would like. Um, all the classes are taught in English. Uh, but you do get to take Spanish classes while you're there, um, go on different trips to really kind of immerse yourselves within the Spanish culture uh, and make the most of your time while you're studying abroad there. Um, and uh, you are actually able to start your time at our Madrid campus and then tr uh, transition to our Boston campus if that's something that you're interested in doing, doing so. Um, so that's a really cool experience that our students have. Uh, and then, so when it comes to kind of career outcomes at Suffolk, uh, we have our Center for Career Equity, Development and Success. And they're a really vital part of our Suffolk community. Um, they're the department on campus that helps with the internship process um, and also the job seeking process as you're getting ready to graduate and enter the working world. Um, they bring uh, employers to our campus for uh, networking and job fair events. Uh, they, they offer career counseling, so helping students figure out what their goals are for the future and kind of what opportunities exist within the Boston community and just kind of the greater community at large of what can be those stepping stones to get them to where they want to be. Um, they offer resume and cover letter assistance, so looking over those really important um, pieces of documentation that are needed uh, when you're applying for an internship or job. Uh, and again, those job search tools, helping them 
you know what are the right tools that will help them find those opportunities that are out there. And also alumni, alumni mentoring as well. Because we're in Boston, so many of our alumni end up getting jobs just down the block. So that means that mentorship opportunities are just down the block as well. And a lot of times our alumni will come back to our campus to meet and speak with our students uh, pretty frequently. Uh, so just kind of talk a little bit about the admissions process at Suffolk. Um, so we, we do the holistic approach. So we really do try to look at everything that is submitted to us um, at the time of the application. Um, so the transcript, uh, the essay, recommendation letters, SAT or ACT score if you wish to send that to us. We are test optional, so you do not have to. Uh, it's really what you feel is the best reflection of who you are as a student. Uh, we also have the honors program as well, uh, which is for highly motivated and academically promising students. Um, and that's an automatic consider um, consideration based on the application process. So there is no additional application you have to fill out to be considered for that program. Uh, and there, are, there is also the SU Advantage program advantage program to provide additional support and coaching for students who may need a little extra help with that transition from high school to college. And then we have our into English language and pathway programs as well, uh, which is essentially similar to our SU Advantage, um, but just to help that additional support for any international students who may need help with that transition um, to the US higher education system. Um, and then so lastly, just to touch a little bit about financial aid. Um, so 94% of our new uh, students for fall 2020 were awarded scholarships. And uh, we have both merit and need based aid um, consideration. Um, so just by submitting application to Suffolk University, you will be considered for that merit based aid. Uh, and then the FAFSA form is required for any uh, need based consideration. Um, so definitely pay attention to the FAFSA deadlines, uh, their website, there are some pretty good tools on there um, to help students with that process. Um, and just as you have an admission counselor, um, at Suffolk when you're applying. You also have a financial aid counselor as well. So I definitely recommend looking up that person's information on our website uh, to make sure if you have any questions, they can answer that. Um, but with that, I just wanna thank you for your time and definitely feel free uh, to follow us on social media uh, and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. We will now move on to LaSalle University. Hi guys, so my name is Olivia and I'm an assistant director over at LaSalle University, which is located in Newton, Massachusetts. Um, so I'm originally from Southern California, but I actually made my way cross country to attend LaSalle. So I am a graduate as well. Um, so Newton is about eight miles from Boston. So we are not located in the city, but we are very close. Um, the city is kind of like in our backyard. So if you're someone who really enjoys the city, um, really enjoys being close to a city, but doesn't want to necessarily live in it, um, then Newton is a perfect distance for you. So we are a smaller school. Um, so we are a private liberal arts school um, and we have around 1800 undergraduate students. And because of that, we are able to have small classroom sizes. So we do cap our classes at 25. Honestly, on average, you're really looking at more 15 to 18 students to a class. Um, because we have these smaller classroom sizes, we are able to uphold a philosophy that we have called connected learning. Um, basically, connected learning means that within your four years with us, we don't want you guys to be reading out of a textbook and just taking tests because we don't think that's really gonna prepare you to be a teacher someday or a police officer or you know whatever it is that you're interested in doing career-wise. So we are really big about making sure that you're doing stuff that's really gonna prepare you for your future career. Um, so again, super hands-on, avoid that textbook, uh, textbook if at all possible. Um, another way that we do that within Connected Learning is we do require at least one internship for our students to graduate. Um, and I will show that on the next slide as well. We do have a three-year degree option. So if you do wanna finish your degree within three years, it is a little bit more rigorous, but we do have students who do it just fine. Um, and we also have something called the Double Laser Program. The Double Laser Program basically means that if you stick with us for your four years to get your undergrad, then you can get your master's with us in just one more year. And it also comes at a discounted price, which is super nice. But we do have over 60 plus majors and minors, and we have five different schools. 
So we have the School of Hedges, we have the School of Health Sciences, the School of Communications and the Arts, the School of Fashion, um, and the School of Business. So definitely check out all of those different majors and minors that we have because we have a lot of them. So like I said, we do require our students to complete an internship before graduation. Um, because it is a requirement, we do kind of handhold you guys the entire time. So don't feel like you're kind of on your own and you have to figure it out by yourself. We will help you throughout the entire process, which is really nice. Um, so about 75% of our students do live on campus. Since we are a smaller campus, majority of people do like to be on campus. We have three dining options. And um, besides those dining options, we do also have a Starbucks on campus, which is always great. Um, we are division three as well. So that means that we don't offer sports scholarships, but we do offer academic scholarships. Division three is the perfect division for anyone who loves playing a sport. They don't want to give it up after high school, but they also know, you know, you're not going to go to the Olympics anytime soon. So division three really, really focuses on your future career and making sure you're, you know, really focusing on that, but you get to play a sport that you love on the side. So that's the great thing about division three. Um, there are also tryouts every single year, but, um, I always say there, if there's never, there's never a bad time to start getting recruited. So if you are interested in playing division three, I always say reach out to the coach whenever you can. Um, if you're not interested in playing division three, we do have different clubs and intramural sports as well, along with 80 other um, just different clubs and activities that you can join. A lot of our clubs are also major specific. Um, so that's great because those are really great resume builders. A lot of the clubs that are major specific will also do a lot of networking. They'll do a lot of field trips. Um, so just a lot of great things to, again, kind of, you know, throw yourself into the major you're interested in and make sure it's something you're going to really enjoy. So we, are, we do have early action. Um, early action, our deadline is November 15th. So it is coming up. Um, basically for early action, it is non-binding, um, but it means that we only look at freshmen, to junior year grades. We do not see anything that is senior year wise. After early action, we do have rolling admissions. That basically means that you can apply almost whenever you want until the start of school. Um, for the application, we generally look for a GPA around a 2.5, but that does not mean that we haven't accepted students with much lower than that. We are also test optional. So that means you do not need to send us your SAT or ACT scores. When we read applications, we like the other schools have said, we really try not to look at you guys as just a number on a piece of paper. You guys are so much more than that. We understand that you're young, you're humans, you also make mistakes. So we do look at the entire application. Um, that when you do apply, which is free to apply, you are then automatically reviewed for our LaSalle University Award. Our LaSalle University Award can be up to $30,000 per year based on a full-time residential student. So say you get 25,000 out of the 30,000, you're getting that freshman year, again, sophomore, again, junior, and again, senior. So that is a really nice award and that is huge. Um, and all you have to do is apply, which again, we are on the Common App. And then we also have our very own application as well. And we do have an open house this Sunday if you're interested. Other than that, feel free to check us out on social media. And thank you guys so much for coming tonight. Great, thanks so much. We will now pass it off to Boston University. Hi there, everyone. My name is Dustin Moran. I'm a senior associate director in the admissions office at BU. Um, and to talk about BU is to really talk about being a large private teaching and research university right in the city of Boston. Um, we have an incredibly diverse student body with students coming from over 130 countries in all 50 states. And with those students comes a diversity of thought uh, with academic programming and opportunity to match with 10 undergraduate schools and colleges housing over 300 different majors and minors. Um, so while our students are applying directly to a specific school or college within the university, um, we're really built around the concept that our students should have the opportunity to pursue coursework spanning all of our schools and colleges and pursue really unique interdisciplinary pathways. So as a BU student, you have the opportunity to pursue double majors, dual degrees, coursework spanning all 10 schools and colleges. It could result in a biomedical engineering student pursuing a minor in music through our College of Fine Arts or a minor in public health through our traditionally graduate level school of public health or a journalism student in our College of Communication 
uh, maybe pursuing a second degree during their four years in biochemistry and molecular bio on the pre-med track within our College of Arts and Sciences. And while our nearly 17,000, while having nearly 17,000 undergraduate students, we are a large university. Uh, there are a lot of resources in place that ensure our students are building connections and able to really work hand in hand uh, with advisors and mentors to find their pathways while at BU. Um, along with the numbers that you can see on the screen here, 80% of our classes have fewer than 30 students, and only 4% of our classes have more than 100 students. And if you add to that the incredibly strong academic advising, our first year student experience program where students learn how to use things like the Educational Resource Center, which is our free tutoring center, our Center for Career Development, our Newberry Center, which provides additional support for students who are the first in their families to go to college, um, and our opportunities for undergraduate research, you'll find the expectation built into your coursework that you're making lasting connections with the brilliant and accomplished folks who make up your faculty. Um, and it leads to a lot of different pathways for experiential learning. A lot of this comes as uh, being a research university. We were founded as a research institution in 1867. We were one of the first research universities in America, it led to Professor Alexander Graham Bell inventing the telephone with a research grant uh, from the university in 1876 in a BU lab. Uh, we continue now as a major tier one research institution with over $570 million in funded research in our campus last year. And our students have a number of different programs that are designed to integrate research internships and clinical experiences into the curriculum and foster and fund undergraduate research experiences during the four years our students spend with us. So whether that means taking advantage of our undergraduate research opportunities program through which we fund over a million dollars of undergraduate research each year, our Yaki Foundation internship program, which works with students who are pursuing internships in the nonprofit sector, um, perhaps it's working with our Build Lab, which is an incubator space on campus with all sorts of different pathways for students to pursue innovation and entrepreneurial thinking, uh, utilize resources across our schools and colleges, and actually receive funding through pitch competitions and venture contests. Um, there are so many ways for our students to get involved. A great example of just the breadth of the research happening at BU can be seen through two of our most recent additions to campus. Uh, last spring, we broke ground and we actually just capped off the 19-story, 345,000 square foot Center for Data Sciences and Computing. Um, it's going to be a central space for math, computer science, statistics, computational science, and engineering, and designed with that interdisciplinary research aspect in mind. Um, as that was being launched, we actually also created the BU Center for Anti-Racist Research with the mission of bolstering the field of research around racism and examining the data that illustrates the effects in our communities and the policies that could allow it to continue to persist in our society. Um, Professor Eben Max Kendi, who heads up that center, actually just received a MacArthur Genius Grant Award for his work. Um, and then through our Center for Career Development, we hosted over 400 employers virtually and on campus last year. We currently offer over 4,000 um, internship opportunities available across our schools and colleges. And we're very much a place that values global engagement and citizenship. Um, it's probably best exemplified via our study abroad programs with over 80 programs spanning six continents. Um, our options are BU run, BU operated. Our programs are for virtually every major in specific tracks, even for engineering students, students who wouldn't traditionally have the study abroad opportunities, um, there, there are options for BU students to go. When you graduate BU, you're entering into a global alumni network with alumni in over 180 of 196 world countries. So we're really trying to create a global campus environment and create opportunities for global learning and global opportunities beyond our campus. In terms of our campus environment, um, I think, again, it's really important to just discuss the diversity of opportunities and the inclusive nature of our campus. At BU, we have students getting involved with over 450 clubs and organizations, spanning student cultural organizations, political organizations, opportunities in the fine arts and service. Um, over a five-year span recently, our students did over 1.8 million hours of community service. We have for club sports, intramural sports, and division one sports too, there is something for everyone on our campus. And our students truly appreciate the home they have on our campus at BU. And so much of that is a testament to the value of the residential experience. Um, with the understanding that student life is going to follow students to where they live, we work to create a home for our students on our campus with first year students required to live on campus and housing guaranteed all four years. Over 80% of our students live on campus. Campus spans about one and a half miles of Commonwealth Avenue uh, with the T, the train system in Boston, running right up through the center of campus for about 15 minute subway ride into downtown Boston. We're right across the street from Fenway Park, a short walk to the shops and restaurants of Back Bay or the museums and cultural institutions of the Fenway area. 
um, and all the opportunities for research and clinical experience found in the medical um, Longwood medical area, some of the top hospitals and facilities in the country. So whether it's pursuing internships, research opportunities, or just for fun, our students really appreciate um, being able to take advantage of all the resources the city of Boston has right at their doorsteps from our campus. I can wrap up and turn things back over to Kara from here. Thank you so much. Um, students, we now just have um, a few questions that we're going to ask all of our panelists. So I invite our panelists to pop back on uh, to that screen. We will go in the order that we presented in. And so what we want to know from you is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? We'll start with UMass. Um, yeah, so I guess um, what I would probably recommend is really just to keep an open mind when it comes to the college search process and you know what colleges and universities you're looking for. You might think there's a specific college or a specific type of college for you, but then you actually go out and explore and you find something that you maybe wouldn't have ex expected. So that'd be my recommendation. How about from Maritime? I am going to 100% second what Michael just said. Um, look at different options and, and find what fits you. Um, I know that years and years ago, I knew I wanted one thing and I wound up at Mass Maritime, which is the one place I told my mom I wasn't going to look. Um, so give everywhere a fair shot. Um, take a look, see what's out there, see what they offer, make sure they have a program that you're interested in studying, but also make sure that they're a campus where you are going to enjoy your time and you're going to, to start to build the life that you're looking for. How about from Suffolk? Yeah, and I would uh, just add um, to make sure that if you can to visit the campus and really be able to see if you can envision yourself there, uh, but also to talk to as many people as possible within that campus's community, um, not only just admissions representatives, but um, people who work, current students, faculty, people who work in the dining hall, the library, um, where have you, just as many different people from that community, just to get a sense that it is the right fit for you and you can see yourself as a student student there. And LaSalle. I would say keep open communication between student and parents or legal guardians. Um, a lot of the times uh, schools will be sending all of the important information to the students' emails and will be contacting the students. And a lot of times parents don't realize that. And sometimes things are missed or sometimes they're like, well, I didn't know that there was this deadline. Well, usually we send all the stuff to you guys, to the students. So Definitely keeping open communication between you and your legal guardians or your parents is super important because you want to keep everyone in the loop. And that's just, yeah, that's my tip. And be you. Yeah, um, so I would agree with all the things that have been said by my colleagues on, on the panel here. Um, going last, I guess the one piece that I could add would just be um, take advantage of all the resources that now exist um, for the college search. I can tell you just from my perspective at BU, um, we offer so many more virtual options and different ways that you can access campus, do a virtual tour, see, experience, feel, and get an idea of what our campus has to offer. Um, and you'll find that across the colleges and universities out there that literally 18 months ago did not have any of this programming and now have so many ways that you can, you can see it. So from an access perspective, it really does give you the ability to get out and really look at the college church as a hybrid process. You wanna be doing both those in-person visits, they're really important, but also um, using those other resources as a way to kind of see other parts of the campuses and get an experience that you wouldn't normally be able to get um, in a, a deeper way than normal. And I'll ask one more question for the group this evening. And that is, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? And we'll start with UMass again. Um, hmm, that's a good question. Uh, I guess just that, you know, UMass Lowell is uh, definitely an, an underrated university. Uh, we, have, we have students who are really hardworking and dedicated to preparing themselves for their careers. and. Um, you know, we really help our students out as much as we can with help with getting towards their, you know, career goals. And Maritime. Um, I guess I would say, um, we're, just remember that we're not the military um, and that you don't have to work on a ship 
um, to graduate, we have a lot of, I, I won't call them necessarily traditional programs, um, but definitely that lean more that way. And so there are a lot of different options. I think a lot of times um, students, teachers, guidance counselors, families see um, Maritime or Academy and they automatically think, oh, you have to join the military or you have to, you know, you have X, you know, X or Y path that you can take, but there are a lot of them. Um, so just be open to that because I know that I almost wasn't um, and really could have missed out. And Suffolk, one thing you'd like students to know. Um, I would say I would want students to know that even though, again, we are right within the city of Boston, we are very much a community. And I think sometimes it feels like students can get lost in the shuffle if you're in a big city. But I feel like we very much um, are a community full of people who are passionate and really want to see all of our students succeed, um, whether it's um, fat, just the faculty or people within um, many of the different departments at Suffolk. We really are that community um, that we want to see everyone grow and be successful. And LaSalle. Well, you, if you were to ask anyone on campus one word to describe LaSalle, it would be community, kind of like how Brian was saying. You can't go anywhere on campus without someone smiling at you, asking how you're doing, waving, knowing your name. And that's kind of just what LaSalle's campus is like, no matter where you are. So if there's one thing to remember, it's that LaSalle's a community and hopefully you guys will join it soon. And be you. Um, yeah, I, I think if I were trying to sum up BU, it's a place of uh, really just diversity, um, diversity of opportunities, diversity of students, diversity of experiences. Um, there are so many different types of people um, studying so many different academic subjects and being in a place where, where you can engage with all those pieces, all those people, um, all those areas is something that I think really excites our students. And I forgot, we actually added a third question recently. So I'll, I'm gonna throw one more, one more to the group. Um, and that is, what is one myth you'd like to debunk on the college admission process? So just one thing you'd like to kind of clarify or debunk on a myth. Lowell, I know you get, you get the first one again. <laughs> I know, right? Um, one myth. Oh, jeez. <laughs> um, can you come back around? <laughs> Well, it's not fair. Maritime, you're up. We'll, we'll let him go. Oh, man, I don't, I don't know. I maybe have been in admissions too long to even remember what the myths are. Um, I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to have to pass on that one too. All right. Okay. I can jump in with one if that would hey, be helpful. Hey, you. Yes. Um, <laughs> so as a recently, we, we recently went test optional. Um, and I think almost every single conversation I've had since we went test optional is basically like, oh, but you're going to penalize me if I don't submit standardized tests. Um, if schools are listing, uh, schools will list what they require, what they recommend and what they need. If they're saying they are optional and they're saying they don't need those things or require those things, then they will evaluate you based on the information that you've presented. So um, I do think that's especially in the current environment with so many schools have moved to a test optional um, place um, for, for really good reason with, with COVID. Um, that's something that, that comes up all the time. And I think I still will have students who, who think they're going to be penalized if they don't submit standardized tests because it's optional, but it can't really be optional. And um, you know, colleges and universities are being honest if something is test optional, it is truly test optional and you know they're being viewed as an additional credential. So um, most every college and university that I've worked with, you can take them at their word for what they're telling you they're asking for and what they're not. Um, they don't have like a secret like way that they're evaluating everything and trying to trick you. They're, they're, we're all trying to be as honest as possible in a process that's pretty complex and confusing. So we'll do our best to be straightforward with that. That is a great one. Lol. Yes, go for I it. I got one. <laughs> um, you, the myth is that, uh, you know, you, you uh, students think they have to know exactly what they want to major in when they start that application process. Absolutely not true. So uh, plenty of undeclared options uh, for most schools. You can go, you know, two years into the program uh, undeclared or undecided. And that's totally OK. You'll still graduate on time and um, still get on with your career and, you know, hopefully find something that makes you happy. I'll let anyone pop in. 
Mayor Times got one. All right. Um, I guess, and a lot of people talked about their um, application deadlines. And I know that, so we have a November 5th early action deadline. And a lot of times for us, I hear, um, if I don't get in early action, that means I'm getting denied. Um, that is not necessarily true um, whatsoever. If you don't get in early action, maybe it's that we need to see some senior year grades. Maybe we wanna wait and see second quarter grades. Um, so if you don't get in early action somewhere, it does not necessarily mean that you will be getting a denial from them. I would say, you know, don't let the sticker price of an institution kind of scare you away from applying. Um, especially if it's free to apply, because then you're not wasting anything, but maybe like 15, 20 minutes of your time, if even that, but you never know what you're going to get from the school. You never know what you're going to get from your FAFSA. So, you know, what's, you know, you should just still apply, especially if it's kind of like your dream school, but you're, you know, scared of that sticker price, just apply, see what happens. If it's not, you know, early decision, you can always say no afterwards. So there's real no harm in applying. Uh, yeah, and I'll just add, I mean, all of those are definitely true, but I definitely do want to echo the um, myth about test optional, because that's definitely something that I'm seeing with a lot of conversations with students and their parents and with high school guidance counselors as well. Um, if a student, if a, a college is saying that they are test optional, they are test optional. Um, a lot of the times we want students to uh, give us an application that is the best reflection of who they are as a student. And if they have a test optional policy and they want to send a test score, great. If they don't, they don't have to. It's not going to penalize you if you do or don't. Again, it can't. It can only help you. Um, again, it's what is best for you and your overall application. This is all very good advice for all of the the myths that that have come about, especially with COVID. That's that's definitely changed. Um, I think a little bit of perception and process um, as we've gone about. So, uh, students, as you are exiting out of the room, thanks so much for joining us. This evening, there will be a quick survey at the end. We ask that you please fill that out. Um, there are more sessions for CASDA tomorrow, so check the calendar for those. And this recording will be available at strivescan.com slash CASDA NY, C-A-S-D-A NY. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us this evening and have a great night. Bye, see ya, thanks.